Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about static electricity. So static electricity is caused by the movement of electrons, okay? Just like current electricity, except that in current electricity, those electrons are always moving, but in static electricity, they move and then they stay there until something else happens. They're static, they're stationary, and then if they do move, they're going to move all at once, and then they're going to be done, and they're going to stay there again. So in order to understand static electricity, we have to understand the basics of, like, what is an electric charge. Well, electric charge is going to come from atoms. Atoms are made up of both positive and negative charges. So here's an image of uh, the atom, and we can see that here's positive protons and negative electrons. So that's where the electric charges come from. And we can actually measure the amount of charge an object has in coulombs. Okay, so there's forces of attraction and repulsion between different electric charges. Like charges will repel while opposite charges will attract. Um, these are very, very, very strong forces. In general, this is it's stronger than gravity, and it's really what causes chemical bonds to occur. And kids sometimes think that it can't be strong because static electricity is not that strong. But you're forgetting that static electricity is just a small, like, side effect of these electric forces. So the side effect of static charge may not be all that much, but electric forces themselves are very, very, very strong. Okay, so there's these things called fields that are surrounding an electric charge. So these field lines are going to look very similar. If you've ever looked at the fields surrounding a magnet, you'll see that they're very, very similar. And um, there's a video here you could watch about that. Strength of that attraction between particle depends on like how many negative charges I have close together and um, how close they are to the positive charges or to the other negative charges. So it's both the distance between the particles and um, how many there are. A static electricity is really a buildup of electrons on an object. And that can happen mostly by friction, by rubbing of one object on another. They can then be transferred from an object that's charged to another object through conduction, or um, we can make a temporary effect on another object with something called induction. So friction is going to be the transfer of charge from one object to another due to rubbing. Now it's always going to be the electrons that, that are the things that are moved because the protons are part of the nucleus and they have to stay put in the atom. So it's only the electrons that can be shifted, say, from your hair to the balloon. Conduction is once we have a buildup of charge on your body, like for example here, here's um, this man has a whole bunch of extra electrons on him and when he touches something metal he gets a shock or what we call a static discharge and that's an example of conduction the electrons were built up on him they stayed on him until he touched something else and then we saw a transfer and it's a one-time transfer it's not continuous like in current electricity the third way that charge can be um, influenced is with a process called induction. And that's when we bring something that's charged near another object and it can temporarily induce or like cause the electrons to move. It's not a permanent thing. It's more of a, a temporary state. I have a couple of videos that will show you the difference between conduction and induction, one using an electroscope that you can see here, and the other one is using some animations that you, that you can see here. Okay. 
So here is an electroscope. This is a tool that we use to detect static electricity. Essentially what we have is a piece of metal that is attached to a metal rod and at the end are some really, really, really thin, thin pieces of metal, kind of like aluminum foil, but thinner. And um, surrounding it is an insulator. So the charge only can be, if it's going to be moved, it's only going to go through this metal. It can't go to the surrounding area. Here's an image of a homemade one. So um, you can see you've got a cardboard cover that would be an insulator, and then we've got a conductor, and then some thin pieces of aluminum. And the idea on how this works is it starts off like every object that starts off as neutral. But if I have an object with a lot of extra electrons on it, like this um, must be a rod of some sort, it's got a whole bunch of extra electrons, and I bring it near to the electroscope, you can see that it pushes the electrons that were already in here, see how they were here, it just pushes them all to the bottom. And that's going to make these two leaves move apart because they're going to get pushed away from each other because they're the same ch charge overall. They're both overall negative and that pushes them away. All right. And here we have a positively charged object being brought close to the electroscope and that's going to take the electrons that were already in it and pull it up. I have a video that shows like a, with a really, really um, sensitive electroscope. I have a video that will show you the difference between these are both showing induction, but also I'll show you conduction with an electroscope and what that would look like. And there we go. Static electricity made beautiful. So one reason that someone's hair stands up like this is because um, this machine's generating a lot of extra electrons that are flowing into her body, and those electrons all want to repel each other. Well, they can't get far enough away from each other. The place they can get farthest apart is actually through her hair, because now this piece of hair can be repelled by that piece of hair, and it can all push away from each other. So you get this really cool hairdo as a result of all these electrons pushing away from each other. If I could draw these in, I would draw in each piece of hair as negatively charged. And so they're all repelling. It's the only place in her body that those electrons can get away from each other. They would, of course, be throughout her body as well. But here in the hair, we can see the result of them trying to repel each other. Static electricity is also in other areas of your life. Lightning is basically giant static electricity. It's really important to be aware of static electricity, especially when you're at the gas station, because if you were to have a buildup of static electricity on you, say from like sitting on your chair and getting out of your chair, that friction of your pants against the chair of the car, um, if you have a buildup of charge on you and then you touch the gasoline, you could conduct those extra electrons to the gasoline, which could cause a fire. <clears throat> One way to make sure that doesn't happen is to touch metal. So basically, if you shut your car door before you pump the gas, that action of shutting it, if you're touching metal, which most car doors are made of metal, it will discharge you and um, allow the extra electrons that were built up on you to transfer into the metal um, where they can just reside safely and not cause a fire. Okay, so static electricity, really cool. Don't blow yourself up at a gas station, okay? If this video helped you to understand static electricity, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe to find other videos like this. Have a good day, bye-bye.